Hello, 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 guys. Guys and gals, I'm just getting ready to do an episode of Honey, I'm Home with my friend Money B. He's going to be joining me real soon. Um, he is the founding member of Digital Underground, so it's going to be a good one. Um, as soon as he gets in here, we're going to get started. So for now, I'm just going to say hi. Um, Skate Metro, what is this? This is an episode of my show, Honey, I'm Home, where I'm going to be talking to different people um, about what they're up to in quarantine. Today is an episode with Money B, so I'm going to and we'll get started. Hello to Austin. Hello to Bobbleholics, Homer Neal. It's M. Avalos. What's up? What's up? There we go. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. I like the background that you got going on there. That's sick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just are those, a, all, a those are all city. your awards? <laughs> yeah, the plaques. Sick. I love it. Okay, so Welcome everybody, if you're just joining us, my name is Jackie Hollywood. I have my friend and dear guest here, Money B, the founding member of Digital Underground. If you don't know who that is, you're slipping, but the Humpty Dance. <laughs> That's all we right? have to say. That's all we have to say. And then everybody's like, oh my God. Um, thanks for joining me. I miss you. It's been a long time since I've seen you in person. Yeah, it's been a while, right? Yeah. You been? I've been good. I've been good. Just, you know, dealing with quarantine just like everybody else. So... I decided to just kind of start this thing and see what, what people are up to who are in the industry, um, musicians, actors, personalities, um, just to right. kind of see how you're handling quarantine and, and what you got going on. There's obviously going to be comments in here. We can, you know, get started to chat and then we can definitely take questions from anybody who has questions as well. I see a question already that says, do you like eating pizza? Um, I personally love pizza. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, you know, <laughs> you know, what's funny about that is that, um, you know, today is Friday and I have a five year, five year old who's walking in here right now. But <laughs> Friday for him is pizza day. So every Friday he, he, he wants his pizza. I love every it. What, what's his favorite pizza? Uh, we make them because uh, we make it here at the house, of course. Ooh. And it's it's pepperoni with spinach. Wow, that's that, that's and that, that, he likes. That means he likes his veggies. Yeah, he does. Well, he likes it. He likes his spinach on his pizza. That's cool. Are you a pineapple pizza kind of guy or no? No. Me neither. <laughs> no, no, no Canadian bacon. No, pe no pineapple. No. I did no learn bananas. a trick. I learned a trick about pineapple pizza. So I was always against it. I'm still not a big <laughs> fan of it. But what I learned about pineapple pizza is if the base is barbecue sauce instead of tomato uh -huh. sauce, it makes right. the pizza taste better. So that's a trick for people that don't like pineapple pizza. <laughs> That's what it's all um, about. Hold on, hold on. Which, what else you like on your pizza? Yeah, come in. And come olives. In there. Come here, Buddha. Come get in there. Say, and olives. Olives. Hi. And hi. olives. Hi, boy. How are you? Say hi. hi. You like hi. olives? You can't hear you because I have the headpiece on. Mm, okay. He likes but, olives. But um, olives and spinach and pepperoni and cheese, right? And tonight is pizza night, huh? <laughs> okay. All right. Adorable. Yeah, it is. Uh, so what have you been up to? Like any projects you're working on from home and how have you been kind of handling this whole situation? <laughs> well, believe it or not, this uh, quarantine or whatever you want to call it is almost like a blessing in disguise for me because I, you know, I, have so many, I do have so many projects that I am working on, like killing my dog for barking. <laughs> But, <laughs> but um, now nah, you know, uh, one thing that it did, I don't know if you knew, but the Going Way Back show, the show that I was doing, I had been on hiatus since I left TZ Radio, whatever they call themselves now, for yeah. about four years. Mm -hmm. And people were asking me to do it, do it, do it. And I was just like, you know, I was so busy because um, another project, Money Being Young Hump, which is the current configuration of Digital Underground, We've been touring so extensively lately that I was just like, well, I don't have time. And then I have my two merchandise websites that I'm running and a few other business ventures that I'm into that. I just felt like I didn't have time. Well, being at home for these past few months gave me the time to kind of uh, learn some of the new technology and kind of read up and watch tutorials. And it gave me the time to actually start my show again. 
So I'm doing the Going Way Back show once again. It's like a two part. It's in two parts. So there's a weekly report where Todd TV does the old school new news. And it's uploaded to our YouTube channel, which is the Going Way Back show. And then every Thursday, we do the live IG interview with some of your favorite classic hip hop artists. So there it is. Cool. Yeah, no, it, ha it has been a blessing. I mean, you know, that's kind of why I started doing this show because now we have plenty of time to to be creative and just for anybody watching the, the backstory of how we know each other was actually through the going way back show which is money b's show right. currently doing um he was on a platform in la that was basically like a podcast sort of video platform and i was um, one of the producers and like of the station and i was um, helping out with the video and audio elements so we met like that and it's been really cool to, you know, to have met you and somebody, somebody so legendary was, it was just really like awesome for me to have you right. come in and do a show like that. So, and you were mm -hmm. always so cool. So I just appreciate that. And I'm glad you're able to, you know, continue doing your show now. Um, right. So definitely yeah. And all you guys were cool. Show. What? No, I said, no, you guys were always cool to us as well. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So it's, it was, it's, it's it was good. a fun, it was a fun time for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so it was always good to see you branch out and grow and do your thing. Like even when we did that um that video segment that I came and did for you, that was fun. Oh yeah, 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 that was fun. Yeah, I, on, uh, I, I start on, so many shows and then I like I I get a new idea and then I start a new show. I'm always like trying to do something new instead of sticking with one. Um, I'm right. always just, I've always been all over the place, but my whole thing is I just like to create. So whether that's like the same show that I constantly do or switch it up and do something new, this is obviously new for me because this is all about quarantine and doing interviews through um, FaceTime or Zoom or Instagram Live has been really a different experience for me because I'm used to sitting side by side with somebody doing an interview. And now there's all these digital elements. There's, oh, right. Wi-Fi connection. Oh, no, it didn't record. There's all these different things that you have to look for now that you, didn't ha you don't have to when you're not in quarantine. So hopefully this is over soon and we can get back and to that, normal. What I, that's the amazing part of it is because we find out if our personalities translate, you know, through a video screen or through the technology. Because when you're right there with the person, you can feel the energy mm -hmm. and you can vibe off of them, see what they like or don't like, you yeah. get a feel. But when we're just doing it like this, I don't know what, I don't know what's happening to the left or right of you or what well, you're about to do have right after. Well, I to my right, so. Um. Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of. just turned the camera. <laughs> and I kind of figured out what was going on anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, have you been doing Same old Jackie. I know, same old, nothing's changed with me. Um, have you been doing anything new in quarantine, like any kind of hobbies that you're getting into that you just didn't think you would ever do otherwise? Yes, video editing. Oh, wow, okay. Absolutely, yeah, so I, I mean, I, 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 and it's crazy because, you know, there's, you know, there's two different main programs, Final Cut Pro X, mm -hmm. and there's the industry standard, which is Premiere Pro, right? Me trying to figure out which one is the best to use, I've actually learned both, which I never thought I would learn wow. one. Wow. You know, but like I said, this time has given me the chance to to watch tutorials, read, and just figure it out on the fly and kind of be a little self-contained when it comes to that. You know what I mean? So I never thought that that's something that I would really, really do. But I actually enjoy doing it, so it's kind of cool. Video editing is no easy feat for anybody out there that's never edited anything. It is it's a not. lot. It is a lot of work. I mean, obviously, I have to edit things here and there for myself. And I actually don't really enjoy the editing part of the process. I like creating, and I wish I could just give all of my videos to somebody else to edit. <laughs> I'm going to start sending you my videos <laughs> to edit because I honestly hate that part. But it, it takes a lot of... Um, understanding and learning so the fact that you got a handle on both of those is like amazing that's a really good thing well it lends to you know it's kind of just in my music background I've, I've actually been a producer and have mixed and you know like the studio part of music you know I've always been into that and it's sort of this it's almost like the same type of application you know you just have to take the time learn the knobs the buttons to push and then have the patience to wait while the things, you know, while technology mm -hmm. does its job for you. So, you know, I can do it. Now, the worst is like when you're when you're waiting for something to render or whatever, and then like your computer freezes or something, you're like, I just spent I just sat for here for three hours waiting for that to edit. And now that happens to me all the time. Um, something goes yeah. wrong. So good yeah. on you for, <laughs> for 
for the for and women. The other thing that I the other thing that I learned is that my computer, both of them are like ten years out of date. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta get some new some new hardware. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because um, because software like that takes takes a lot, a lot. So now with your family at home, you got the kid, you got the lady, right? So he's. I assume your kid obviously can't be in school. So how's it been like having him home all day? And then do you have to kind of play the teacher role? You have to be a parent, a teacher, and everything. How's that been? Well, that's probably the most challenging part of this whole thing is because you know I work from home anyway, so this is like business as usual. And then my wife, she um she works from home, what, out of you know out of the week she works from home, three now four days of the five days of the week, so it's business as usual for us. It's just a really huge transition for him, and being that he's the only child, he doesn't have any other kids that he can play with. Mm -hmm. But you know, as far as education, you know, we split the duties where Tanya, you know, Tanya Teasy, yeah, yeah, she does the she does the majority of it. And then I come in in the afternoon. You no, know, she wakes up early. They get started. Then I get up and I have my my hour of, and you know I have my duties that I have to do with him, which I enjoy. And then later in the evening we read. So he he he's getting it. And we actually are noticing that he's picking up and he's progressed and learned since he's been here. So That's I'm kind really of proud cool. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. It must be really hard. Obviously, obviously, I don't have kids, so I don't know how it is, but. There's people that have kid, multiple kids and they have to like somehow work from home, raise their kids, parent their kids, teach their kids during this and still take care of themselves. And that just sounds crazy. Yeah. And, 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 and keep them busy. Or I don't know what you want to call it. Occupied, but yeah. yeah, yeah. No. Keeping them. Yeah. I mean, they're kids. They want to run. They're like, they're like puppies. They want to yeah, run around and play. It. They have energy. I mean, People like me and you, we probably just wish we had time to relax and chill because we're we're old and tired. But like kids just want to run around, and it it's it's definitely hard. Um, it's a weird world we're living in. So I want to <laughs> I want to take questions. If anybody in the comments has any questions for either of us, um, obviously this is all about money. B, but any questions go. I'm gonna look and scroll up and see if there's anything that we missed. Um, hi to everyone who's in here. Thank you for joining. Of course, let's see if there's anything that anybody wants to know. Um, look shout like out! Just saying hi. Yeah, hi shout out to Dyer Lansky. Wow, that's a long way away. Say what? No, I seen my guy Dyer Lansky. Shout out! He got a dope show on IG as well. Uh, Cletus Mack in the building. Who else? Dan you know, I'm Cleary. Too. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Do you know right. Dan? You guys worked in the same building together. He was on uh, Dark Matter with Dave Navarro. I remember Dark Matter. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Dan's in DJ here. always in the building. You remember always. What's up? Yeah, it's the same guy that was on your show when. when yeah, was, the DJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's up, DJ? Always. Yeah, it's been so many years since I lived in LA. I actually um, really want to move back. I'm planning to when this whole thing is over before the year is up. Hopefully, are you still in LA right now? Yeah, still in the Southern Cal. Cool. What part of LA are you in? I'm in the IE. In where? Inland Empire. I'll buy San Bernardino. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I was driving into LA every week. That's true. Know. I remember you telling me you had like a really long drive. I think that was you was telling me that. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, how's LA handling all this? I think they were, you know, they were hit pretty hard. We, I mean, so were we, but I think LA is obviously like a bigger place with people. People in LA tend to want to go out more and do things more. So it must have been a lot harder over there. Well, you know what is Amazingly, I have no idea because I don't go out, so I don't know right. what's going on in LA. <laughs> well, just what you see, and, like on the news or on social media and things like that. Um, and also, people may criticize me for this, but I actually don't watch the news. I think it's better I don't for either. for my health to not stress out because all it is is it's it's a little bit of information, and then it's eighty percent scare tactic, right? Yeah. And then every day it changes, so I'd rather just wait until. I hear the final word because until it changes, nothing's going to change for me. We're going to stay home. <laughs> you know what I mean? So watching the news is really not helping me because nothing that they're going to tell me is going to change how I move around. Because right now I'm, I'm, I'm in the house as much as I can. I only go out to get what I need. Mm -hmm. You know, my family, we shelter at home. We take this shit serious. And, you know, I'll pop in and see, listen to the clown talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> About whatever. And... 
then shut it off. <laughs> but I get I get I get most of my news from Ty Teasy or my cousin Cletus Mac. They'll say they'll tell me what's happening, and that's it. Yeah, I'm but the same this way, weather, man. I'm, the news is just it's it's just a lot of of misinformation. They just want you to like get scared, and I obviously they want you to stay at home, which is cool. That's what I'm doing. I'm I'm at home. I mean, obviously I go outside every now and then to like get some air and and whatnot. But um, I haven't seen any of my friends. I miss everybody. Like. It's been wild, but of course, the news isn't just on TV. When as soon as we open social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like you see the news on there anyway. So it's kind of hard to escape from it because it's just everywhere. People are posting links, whether they're whether it's fake news or not. Like you constantly see different articles, and now we have the murder hornets. Like we have bees to worry. About. I mean, there's there's some crazy stuff going on in 2020. <laughs> I mean, all of it. You know, I pay attention, but. You know, once again, I think with all of this, it's about, um, you know, being healthy and keeping your immune system up. And, and stress is something that deteriorate, deteriorates your health as well. So I just believe, like, rather than stressing out, I'd rather, you know, learn Premiere Pro, teach my son, hang out and do the things that I do, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Music that, to that's make cool, and like learning. shows to run. Yeah, yeah, learning new hobbies, like you said, the um, video editing. There's um, me personally, like I've been, I've been cooking and trying to experiment more with that. I never cooked before. I'm not really a domesticated woman, but I mean, maybe I'm becoming Word up. now. <laughs> um, things I love like it. that that I never thought I'd do. So honestly, I think you're right. It's well, you got you got to feed the strippers. I know. I you got to feed the strippers. Here, but <laughs> got to feed the strippers. Get it in. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You know, I try to make light of the situation as much as I can. Obviously it's serious and people have died. And so it's, it's none of it's like funny or anything, but at the same time, if you're no, alive and well, it's a good time to kind of try to be positive. The earth is getting cleaner and the water is nicer and the air is nicer. So when this is all done, at least we as people can go out and enjoy clean, nice things again, which hasn't been in a while. So yeah, that. the weather's getting, it's, I, I, it's hot as, something out here right now <laughs> and um, believe it or not i'm drinking coffee hot coffee on a hot ass day that's funny i, ha I have iced I'm coffee sweating. it's um you know san francisco is not the warmest city in the world so it, even right. it's because of global warming and whatnot it actually has been warm here which it's usually not um i think it's about probably like mid 70s today which is which is nice maybe 80 so yeah what? it's like 90 right here 90 something yeah, but you, I, I saw in the comments, DJ always said you have a pool, so that that probably helps. That helps. Yeah, because we, gonna do a little so bit we, of have, that tomorrow. we have a pool at this um, complex, but the, it's closed because it's an apartment complex, so we can't use it. So we, we can walk outside, look yeah. at it, cry about the fact that we can't sit there or use it, and then go back upstairs. So that, that part sucks. Like, having one and not being able to get in sucks. Well, you want to hear, hear a funny story? Yeah, <laughs> it just happened today. So I do have a pool and we have our, you know, the guy that comes and cleans our pool weekly. He does it on Friday. So he came today and he was, you know, he had to, we had a, he had to fix a gasket on the pool pump or whatever. So I actually had to talk to him about something. And as I'm talking to him, it's like, he don't give a fuck. He just leans in and he's talking to me. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I have to like swallow I wanted to just spray my whole face with, <laughs> with Lysol after he left. I was like, I haven't been that close to somebody in a long damn time. I know I it's like, weird, right? It's weird how our minds <laughs> are so we're so scared. Um, that that something right. similar happened to me about a week or two ago. I was out, mm. I was out on a run in the morning, and I ran into somebody that I knew, and. Um, I was like, I wear a mask everywhere I go, but when I'm running, I'm, I take it off because I mean, obviously, yeah, like, you got I, to. I need to breathe and I just stay away from people. Um, but I, so I was wearing mm -hmm. one and then I ran to this girl that I knew and she wasn't wearing hers. She was also doing exercise. And so I said hi to her from a distance. I was like, hey, girl, what's up? Good to see you. And like, she's inching closer and closer. And I'm like, moving back. And I don't want to be rude, but like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you don't want to be fucked up, but it's yeah, fucked up. I mean, she like, didn't reach in for a hug or anything like that, but. It's it's weird. I've seen multiple people that I know outside so far, just like in passing on the streets. Um, San Francisco's yeah. a really small city, so it's it's obvious that I would run into somebody that I know, and it's just always weird because I want to be like I would normally give every anybody a hug. I'm a hugger. I've always been a hugger. Right. I like to hug right. my friends. I like to show affection, and I can't do that 
and it's weird and i feel like a robot like hello good to see you <laughs> or what, what part of the city are you in um so well so i have a, i live in the sunset technically my parents have a house in the sunset so i'm in the sunset but then my boyfriend has a place near um near where the warriors play now so near like mission bay by the water yeah. so right. i'm here um but so I, I just go back and forth. They're both quarantined, so it's fine. Like we're all quarantined, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but I have basically two districts that I'm in. This is the this is the sunnier district right here. The sunset's nice. always really really foggy. So yeah, I can't wait to go back to LA. Honestly, like I'm over it. I'm over it here. My dad, my dad used to live in Sunset. I think like like 33rd and something. Oh cool. Oh, that that's so yeah. that's so random. <laughs> what up, John Stockton? I see. You. Yeah, who else is in here right now? Hi, Alex. I see, I see Peter Butter, Peanut Butter Jones, be sup. John Bereno, shout out from LA to the Bay, sending love. Thank you. Sending love back to everybody. Um, Sierra, Real John Stockton, Coza Real, Mundo Films, um, Michelle. If anybody has any questions, whether it's about quarantine or about just life, <laughs> let me know. Um, this is fun, just, you know. Trying to see what other people are up to makes me feel better about being in quarantine, knowing that like I'm not alone. Everybody else is kind of I don't want to say suffering <laughs> together, but we're all kind of suffering together. Nah, the, the weather's nice, man. You gotta you right. gotta just you know make lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> that's the that's the term, but really just yep. If like if it was raining, we could be complaining about the rain. Now it's sunny, we complain about this. We complain about being in the house. Now we complain about being outside. It's like just deal with it and just, you know. Yeah. Well, someone's asking, how do you feel it. about the reopening? Well, nothing's open here yet. So technically the Bay Area is quarantined until officially until the end of the month. So June 1st, we're supposed to open things up. Is it going to happen? I don't know. Um, they had they had different phases listed. So the first phase was open up things like banks or uh, curbside pickup for retail stores. Like you can't go in the store, but you can buy stuff and pick it up. So they had all these right. phases and then the next phase was open up more things and then bars and then restaurants and I don't know. So is, is anything yeah. going to open up? I have no freaking clue. <laughs> In LA, I know they're talking about it and it's supposed to be happening really soon. Like I said, as I'm switching to my sports channel, I see, <laughs> I see the governor talking about something. But um, me personally, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a play it safe. You know, I'm going to probably keep doing what I'm doing until it's actually time for me to go out and work. Meaning, you know, some of the shows that we had scheduled have been rescheduled. And when those things start happening, that's when I'm gonna start really venturing out, you know, I, you know, because I have to, I gotta go make a living. But uh, as far as just around here. Yeah, musicians are hit hard. Cause you know, you're, you, you base your, your life off of obviously music, but then touring and and um, even me, I'm not, obviously I'm not like a full-time musician or anything, but I, I have, I play shows sometimes and I had a show schedule that had to be postponed and um, that was my, my highest paying show and, and, and it got canceled and like, I, I was really looking forward to it. So that's crazy, uh, right? Like, why were you about to get paid? <laughs> yeah. For the first time I actually felt like, Ooh, I'm like, I feel like a real artist now. Cause you know, I'm getting a check, like a, a good one. And, and right. yeah, I got like taken away kind of thing, but you know, they postponed it for November. Um, is it going to happen? Yeah. I, I don't know. But at the same time, like I have so much to be thankful for the fact that I have a place to live and I don't have to worry about, you know, lots of things like I, it, a lot of people have it harder than that. So I just have to be thankful. Well, man, it. if I told you what we were supposed to get in March, April, May, <laughs> oh man, it was going to be good. But, you know, like I said, I, it, if, if, if it's postponed, that means it's going to happen. So it all, it all comes back. But, you know, really... Another fun fact that people might not know, I'm actually a, a homebody anyway. I don't leave my house. Yeah. Even on when, when, it's, when things are normal, I don't leave unless I have to go. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, always, yeah, yeah. you know, it's funny. And I, I tell my wife, I tell Tanya Tizzi, I say, I hate leaving the house because every time I leave the house, I spend $100 <laughs> for some strange reason. I end up going to get gas and then get this Uh oh, your your audio cut out for some reason. Oh, 
Okay, we're gonna call him back. So don't go anywhere. Let me call him back. I think the the connection, and I'm gonna answer um, your question, Loki, about our eating habits. But let me see if I can get him back real quick. I think it was a, a Wi-Fi issue, probably. I lost you. There you are. Sorry. That's all good. I can hear you now. Um, so we do have a question from Loki. Sure. He wants to know how has your eating habits been affected during quarantine. It's a good question. Um. Uh, this has been a chance for me to really try to eat a little bit better, a little bit healthier. You know, I've actually been kind of work, work, working on the gut a little bit, trying to get it right. You know, quarantine tonight is about to be summertime, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it together. So I've been, I've been. You've been doing better than usual with food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been doing the thing. Man, I, I, I wish I could say the same. I'm, I think I'm doing worse because now I'm home all day and, and I, got, I got the chance to like just eat what I snack all day. Can you hear me? Or yeah. Is, yeah? Well, it's, it's, it's easy to sit around and snack all day, but I'm, I'm making a conscious effort to watch all day. Hold on. Yeah, it's, it goes in and out, your audio. Like, it was fine. Say what? You, I said your audio goes in and out. It was fine in the beginning until now. Now it's like. Yeah, my, my headset went out one second. Sorry, you guys. Let me try yeah, no worries. That. Let me see if there's any other questions on here. Yeah, eating eating has been, um, I've been trying to be good. And I have days where I, where I do good, where I'm like, yes, I had like enough veggies and fruits today and I didn't snack too hard. And then other days I'm like, man, I just want an extra large cheese pizza with a whole bottle of ranch with a lava cake afterwards and some hot Cheetos. <laughs> Right. And that's just been like... Well, my, my hair said went out, but I, I can hear you slightly, so I'm going to try to just keep it lit like that. All right, I'll, um, I'll keep my voice up. Yeah, so we went out, we bought a bunch of healthy snacks and whatnot, and just trying to keep it keep it straight. Still yeah. drinking my beer, though. <laughs> that's one thing that I noticed that a lot of people are doing more than they did before is drinking, because like people are just at home and they have nothing to do, so a lot of people are just heavily drinking, and I'm actually the opposite, where... I used to drink quite a lot and now I'm stuck at home and I find myself, cause I was always a social drinker. I never had like a glass of anything at home just with dinner. I always right. drink at the bar with my friends. And so now that I can't do anything, I find myself not drinking at all. So that's the one thing I am being healthier on is like basically zero alcohol. So there's not that. <laughs> we all got our vices though. Cause I, I do other now, You know what it is, is like when I'm, when I'm like say on, on a Friday or on the weekend, if I'm doing some of my interviews or conversating on Zoom or whatnot, that's that's socializing, right? So that's usually when I have, you know, get my thing on. And a day like today is burning up. I'm definitely gonna have a few cold ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it's hot out, you are allowed to have as much cold beer as you desire. <laughs> um, I'm Somebody said, drink warm beer for gut health. Is that true? Ooh, I'm gonna have to look that up because I literally have never heard that. Might be, but. We'll have to find out. Um, other I comments. I guess I'm not going to have good gut health. I like my beer cold. Sierra Lynn says she saw you on the set of Tupac's movie in ATL. When was that film? Who did? Sierra Lynn 26. Oh, what, what, what scene was she in? Was she extra at the club or something? Yeah, were you there or, you, or did you just like walk by and see? Or when, when was that filmed? Like a few years back? It was filmed in uh, 2016. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. How was that experience? That sounds like a fun it was set dope. to be a part of. It was Tell real me about dope. that. Huh? Tell me about that, like the whole experience of being on set for the Tupac movie. How was that? No, it was dope. I actually I had like a, a, a small role in it and I was more or less a consultant on set, right? And you know, it was just amazing to see a, a collective of people work so hard to try to get it right. You know what I mean? You know, I've heard all of the the reviews and what people say about it, but it was a dope experience. And from from my viewpoint, they did as much as they could to make it look exactly how it happened. And a lot of times they nailed it, you know what I mean? So I was glad to be a part of it, sure. That's really, that's so fun. She, yeah, she said she was an extra on the part that Tupac was auditioning for Juice. Nice. Cool. That's, that's awesome. That's a, that movie. sounds like a fun thing to be an extra. And I've been an extra in a couple of things myself, but that sounds like a cool set to be on. 
How, did you get a lot? Did you get a lot of love for that? For that being in that, like family, friends hitting you up and everything. What in the movie? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, somebody said, "How many porns did Money B produce?" <laughs> you want to answer that? <laughs> uh, you know, we did quite a few. Me and my man Cletus Mack. Cletus Mack is in here. You know, he was the he was the. Uh, I want to say the. The, the brands behind it, you know what I mean? But me and him, we partnered up, Sex in the Studio Productions. We had Sex in the Studio episode one and two, which was like at the time, you know, the, one of the most successful quote unquote porn videos that it came out, you know, music related, I would say. Mm -hmm. And we did really well with it. We ended up, you know, we were in, in, in that industry heavy from about 2001 to about 2005, 2006, and I couldn't tell you, oh, Cleese said 20 plus. I was about to say, I can't tell you how many butt cheeks I saw, but we did a lot of them. Well, if, if, if it was 20 plus films, you would have seen a lot of butt cheeks because each person has two, and so you got to double the number, and now you're seeing Yeah, multiply that by, <laughs> I don't know. Somebody said Fat Tuesday was lit. Yeah, Fat Tuesday, that was one we did with um, Lil John and at Mardi Gras, and New Orleans, which was really fun and a great experience. So it was a great experience, man. We got to meet a lot of people for myself personally that, you know, as that industry started to compress, meaning, you know, the whole video part of it, now everything's, you know, video and streaming and everything. Mm -hmm. As yeah. that started to dwindle, a lot of the people in that industry started to find other industries. And I run into them all the time and, and do business with people that I met in the porn industry, but we now do business in other industries. So it was kind of dope. It it's cool to network like that. You meet you meet somebody somewhere and then you you start, you, you have a bond and you start creating other things and that's really cool. So yeah. that's awesome. And it happens um, all the time, you know, from music to whatever, from the porn to whatever. So all yeah. that. Um, what else? Let's see, Fat Two. Oh, we read that. Loki D says, tell a Tupac story. Is there a story that was like something that, Something that sticks out in your mind whenever you think about him that was like really fun or funny, maybe like some a funny story. I'm sure that's something she wants to hear. Um, you know, one thing I I always tell people like Tupac, when I first met him, he thought that shrimp cocktail was a delicacy. Right? <laughs> so, and you know, I, and I didn't I didn't understand it until <laughs> after I really got to understand where he came from and what, what he came from, right? Yeah. But when we first took him out on the road and we used to, uh, you know, we'd be sitting in the lobby and chatting about what you guys want. And he got shrimp cocktail. And when it come, he'd, you know, like <laughs> eating that shrimp cocktail, the shrimp side of the thing, like it was the last shrimp cocktail thing he was ever going to get. And he just thought that was, he was living large every time he had <laughs> So can we confidently say that shrimp cocktail was Tupac's favorite food? <laughs> Definitely in the early years, for sure. That's really funny. I've never had one. I've never even had shrimp in my life. Can you believe that? Are you allergic to shrimp? I, well, I've been a vegetarian since I was 10 on my own accord. Uh -huh. no, no one in my family is. It was just like, I, I just didn't ever like meat. I, I was grossed out by it for whatever reason. But when I was little, I obviously had things like chicken nuggets and hot dogs and things that kids eat when you know processed meats and stuff but as I got older I was like oh I don't like any of this stuff and so something I never tried is shrimp lobster never had steak never had ribs you probably think I'm absolutely insane but I've never even tried it <laughs> no, it's probably, probably a good thing one thing that's funny like you never you don't see too many kids that don't like you know usually kids go straight for the meat right and it's yeah. crazy that my my son the meat is the last thing that he likes on the plate at every meal yeah, it was different. I think that I always like push my mom said I always used to push the meat off to the side of my plate and just not really touch it. So I guess ever since I was a little kid, I was I was very picky. I was a very picky kid and I'm still a very picky adult. <laughs> right. So somebody's uh, asking what station do you work for in, in, in the bay? I'm oh I see. Oh, what's up, Cannon? Um I so I work at Wild 106. It's out in the Central Coast, slow, um, slow county. Obviously I live in San Francisco, so I voice track for, for that station. Um, afternoons. I used to work for 99.7 now here in San Francisco. Um, so, you know, I've been back and forth. Definitely looking to uh, transition to a station in LA, hopefully. Um, 
one day, but uh, we'll see how that works out. But thank you for the compliment. Very nice of you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hold on. I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a top, I'm a get a little personal with somebody on here. Yeah, go, ahead, quick. go for it. That's Clee, what it's all about. Clee, if you're on, let me see a thumbs up. Cletus Mack, if you're still on the call, let me get a thumbs up because I want to tell can you check, I can check if you, yeah, he's still in here. I could check the viewers. So I see you in there. All right, Clee, if you're on here still, can you please call my father and tell him to stop calling me right now? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm just getting nonstop call from my dad. And I know it's not about too much of nothing, but. Oh, like right now? Like, you'll keep calling me until I answer the phone. Huh? Like he's calling you currently right now? He keeps calling me. Like, that's why the thing Are blocked you sure out. you don't want to answer? I feel doing. bad. What if, it's, what if it's important? Say what? What if it's really important? I feel bad like I'm holding you back. It's not because I answered it. And he's like, look, let me just tell you this and that. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> well, that's, that's exactly That's why I said, Clee, do me a favor and call him and tell him what I'm doing. Clee, tell he's him right. that Money B is on a very important business call with Jackie Hollywood, and he'll call his dad back later. <laughs> Word. He said, he said okay. Um, Shout out to Sick Kev. He said number one with a bullet. That's the um, number one. Number one with the bullet is the song that I did with Tupac on our very first Raw Fusion album, Live from the Stolly Tribe. Not a lot of people mention that song, so that's what's up. Thank you. Do you know what's crazy is that line? I actually didn't know that. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know that. But that line is a line from uh, Fall Out Boy's "Sugar We're Going Down." So they must have got it. Wait, say that one more time. That line, Fallout Boy says it in that song, Sugar, We're Going Down. They say number one with the bullet. I never knew what the reference was to that line. Oh. So now I'm learning that he, they must have taken that line from, from that, from that project. That two well, no, no, I have no, no, no. Idea. Number one with a bullet is a term that was always used, you know, in the music industry, like, you know, up when, you're, when you're climbing up the charts, Oh. Your number one with the bullet mean that it's still shooting, still oh, shooting. Oh, oh, I so see. So number one with a bullet mean like it's number one, but it's gonna be there. So even in the song number one with a bullet, we were kind of just telling the story of you know in the industry, record record companies and record execs, you know, to to put in your head that you could be number one with the bullet if you do this and if you do that, and that's kind oh, of wow, I learned something new every day. That song. Yeah, that, that's really huh? interesting. I said I learn something new every day. I just learned right. That. So that's the, the term that's where the term comes from. But in the song, Tupac's reference of it is like I'm gonna put a bullet in in your head, kind of like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's so crazy because as soon as I saw somebody comment that, I thought like, oh, that's that one line from that Fallout Boy song. <laughs> nah, nah, it's, it's been around for a while. That's crazy. That's cool. I, I love learning new facts um, every single day. That's very mm -hmm. interesting. So thank you for that. Um, anyone else have any questions so far? It's been really, really fun. Lots of fun conversations. Um, I love that this turned into, it was like, what are you doing in quarantine kind of show, but it just turned into a whole conversation about everything, which yeah, and that's I love. Yeah, all about, you know, people you can yeah. have fun. That's what I said. Now, now, now it's a social call. I need my beer. I know. You can go grab a beer if you want. <laughs> I think I will. Hold on one second. Keep talking. All right. I'll keep the people entertained while you grab your cold one. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining. If you just got here and you're wondering what all of this even is, um, this is for a show that I started doing called Honey, I'm Home. My name is Jackie Hollywood, of course, and I'm just getting different types of guests on here, whether it's musicians, actors, reality stars, uh, comedians, whoever it is people in the industry and just kind of see what they're doing during quarantine, how their life has changed, where their life is going, how they're handling, you know, if they have kids, what are they doing with them? Like all that kind of stuff. So Money B is an old friend of mine from uh, when, when I used to live in LA. So I just thought I'd hit him up. So far, it's been really fun. Um, hi to Bridget, who else is in here? Hello to Six Sev, The Real Ghost Raven. Um, thanks for joining us. Of course, if you have any questions for either Money Bee or myself, feel free to ask. Um, Instagram Live has a cap at one hour. Um, we're at 40 minutes now, so I don't think it's going to go on like too much longer just because they're going to cut me off anyway. Um, so definitely get any kind of questions in that you have. But it's been a really, really fun and interesting conversation. I have other episodes of Honey, I'm Home as well on my IGTV and also up on YouTube with different guests. I have Gangsta Boo from 3-6 Mafia. 
Um, I have a reality star from MTV. The list goes on. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Um, Diamond Products, what's up? How are you? Thank you for the awesome stuff you've sent me. Um, what days will you be doing these? So right now, I it's kind of sporadic. Like I have uh, five episodes up on IGTV, so I was releasing one every single day. But I turned those into IG Lives. So I'm going to try to do these as many days in a row as I can. Yeah, you got your beer. Um, someone was just asking me um, how often I'm going to be doing these. So I, I'm going to do them as much as I can. When I have a really cool guest, I'm going to try to do one every day, if not every day, at least a few times a week. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But everyone seems to be enjoying. Wait, so. what was the question? Hold on one second. I'm going to try to get my, my, my piece back on. If oh, someone, someone was just asking me what days I'm going to be doing the show and, and like kind of my schedule on it. So, oh, you're frozen. That's another thing with technology. It's never perfect. Oh, there you are. You're back. <laughs> Say what? I said you're back. You were frozen for a sec, but you're back. It's hard. Sometimes technology, you know, lags a little bit. Now, what, thank what was you the question again? Oh, the question was just how often am I going to be doing these shows and kind of my schedule. Oh, you said every day, right? I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to try. It's all about booking guests. So I'm working hard to book people that I find interesting. Obviously you are one of the people that I hit up. So I'm just kind of um, trying to get as many cool people on as I can. If it's not every day, it's going to be as often as I possibly can do it. So at least a few times a week, definitely. Well, I'll be tuning in. Cool. That, yeah, that means a lot to me and uh, it'll be great to watch. Hopefully the time difference. Oh, right. You're in the UK. So yeah, time difference. But the thing is with IG you Live. You got to set your alarm when you know she's coming. I know, I know, that's true. But I'm also going to save these because um, I, I can save them and then I'm going to repost them to IGTV. So this live interview and talk right here will actually be up on Instagram, YouTube, and everything so people can watch it later at a later date. So there is that. Um, any last questions? I think it's coming to an end pretty soon. It's almost been an hour and, you know, IG cuts off at an hour. So if anyone has any final questions or comments, now's your time. And, of course, I want to open up the floor to you, Money B, if there's – Anything you right. want to promote? I have, I, have, um, I, have some, I have some words of advice for everybody out there that's, you know, obviously, Jackie, you won't do it, but a lot of people out there, they, you know, they think they jump on, they can jump on and just start their IG live shows. And, you know, even when you're doing Zoom calls or FaceTimes or whatever, the trick is, because a lot of people do this to me, do not talk with your phone down looking up at your face. Because we can oh, see under in your, your nose. chin like that. Yeah, they holding it like, oh, like this, this, and you like can see this? the boogers in their nose. Yeah, I can't stand it. Hey, how's you it going? You can see the nose hairs. <laughs> That's the worst thing ever. Like I. And all the shit in their teeth, everything. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a parent thing to do. Lots of um, parents of the old, not like your generation. Parents, yeah, I was gonna like, say yeah, like my 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 stepmom. She uh, yeah, yeah, she yeah, does yeah. that. Like your your parents, my parents, um, they they think that we can't hear each other from the distance, so they like to hold their phones really close so that we can. Right. But I'm like, we can hear you from like ten feet away. It's all good. <laughs> you know, like, so yeah. Oh, we got another question. Like, put some um, clothes Sev. on. Six Sev wants to know: Did Digital Underground ever audition any girls for Rumpty Rump? We did not, but. If there ever was going to be one, look online and find the, the Digital Lover poster. Um, there was a chick that was, that was down with us. Her name was Christine. And she did, uh, she did that poster. She was rumpty rump. <laughs> cool. She had, that, she had that, that, that robot body, man. Like. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Well, yeah, if we were gonna it. if we were gonna build one, it was gonna be her. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the perfect. <laughs> yes. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, this has been really fun. Maybe we can do this again. We could do like another catch up in in a week or whatever. It seems like Absolutely. people are liking it. Let me know. Um, Hit me up. Any advice of people auditioning for American Idol? Well, unfortunately, neither me or I assume Money B have not been on American Idol. <laughs> But um, I think just honestly, practice, 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 be the best that you can be and be yourself and show your, they like personality. Obviously you have to have a good voice, but I think they really are looking for like the it factor, the personality. So just be yourself. Um, uh, that would be my advice. <laughs> 
Oh, and you know, another thing that I, that I picked up that I learned <clears throat> or that I'm learning is that, remember when we were talking about the flyer for the show, right? Mm -hmm. And I was telling myself like, man, I'm a, I need to start making flyers for my show. So I made your flyer last night and yeah. I just kind of just kind of figured it out doing that. So that was like a teaching moment last night. It took me probably a little bit longer than I, than I thought it should, but yeah, Pratt's all about practice. practice. So you made that one in however long, but like if you make one again tonight for something else, it'll take you less yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I'm going to keep doing. Yep, so that's, that's, all, that's all it is with anything in life. Um, practice, don't give up just because something gets hard. Um, I've been trying to do web shows and things like this my whole life. This is, I live for this. I love interviewing. I love doing this. Sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes a job doesn't work out. That doesn't mean you stop ever. You never stop. You keep going until the day that you draw your last breath is my advice. So yeah, if, yeah. if you don't fail, that means you're not, you're not trying. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You don't fail. We just, the ones that succeed are the ones that keep going. Right. And you know, to answer my man's question, I, I'm not sure if it was a man or a woman, but you know, the key to getting on American Idol is you have to know how to sing. And that's the best thing I could tell you. You're right, right. Be a, be a singer and it might work. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a tough, tough show to, to land on, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me again and say hi to the family for me. Um, obviously, Ton TZ, she was really cool, the wifey when, when I met her back in the day. So say hi to her. Um, Say hi to the kid. Enjoy your pizza night. Have a great weekend. And hopefully this whole thing will be over soon. And I'll come to LA and we'll catch up in in real time, <laughs> in real life. Work. You did it right. You did it right. Um, you know, I want to say thanks for having me on the show. You know what I'm saying? It's good to see that you're doing well. You know what I mean? And I just want to let everybody know, <clears throat> you get a chance, go over to 90s Hip Hop or dumerch.com. Those are the two merchandise websites. You get officially licensed digital underground merchandise or your classic hip hop artist merchandise. Um, follow me over there or go to the website directly. See what you like, man. We always got discounts and that's what it do. Cool. Yeah, definitely support Money B. If you're a follower of mine, but not his yet, then definitely go over to his page and give him a follow. If you're a follower of his and not mine yet, go over to my page, give me a follow because it's all love between us. Like, I, I, I really enjoy doing this type of thing with you. So, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll get this posted up as soon as, as, soon as I can. <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, I appreciate it, and I'll be back with more Honey, I'm Home soon. I will, <laughs> I'll let you guys know when the next episode is. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Have a good one.